Did you know that traditionally certain flowers had very particular associations and meanings to them and that actually an entire language was created to allow lovers to secretly communicate with each other using only flowers? Are you perhaps someone who's even looking for a fragrance for a special occasion, perhaps even a wedding, but you want some kind of meaning behind that fragrance choice? If you are, then look no further than the language of flowers, floriography which is what this video is going to be all about. So if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume and perfume science, but I'm also really interested in the social history of perfume as well. So if that interests you, then please consider subscribing and also please like this video. So what is floriography and how does it work? Well, back in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries, communication between unmarried men and women was extremely limited. In the Victorian era, floriography reached its peak. It was a really hot trend. And actually, floriography gave people a way of communicating and expressing feelings and emotions that would otherwise be unsaid. Even complex meanings and even questions could be posed using floral bouquets. People could even answer these questions by returning particular flowers or by holding bouquets in particular positions on their body or with particular hands. So in this way, you can see how those het up, stuffy Victorian lovers could flirt all they liked all day, every day, just through flowers. But the Victorians were certainly not the first people to use flowers to communicate. Throughout the world, different civilizations and throughout time have assigned different meanings and symbolism to different flowers. So why am I making a video about floriography? Well, our fragrance choices give impressions to the world. They they say things about us without us even perhaps meaning to say them. And I've started to wonder just how much is the meaning of flowers still around today? How much could wearing or choosing a particular fragrance convey an emotion or feeling to somebody else? Perhaps you're someone who's looking for a wedding fragrance and you want some extra meaning behind that fragrance. Knowing floriography and the meanings behind flowers will certainly help you to choose a perfume for your wedding. And so in this video, I will talk about the meanings and symbolism behind 10 different floral notes. And I will also give you examples of perfumes with those floral notes in. And I will tell you what those florals communicate in the language of flowers. So orange blossom. So orange blossom is a small, delicate white flower that comes from the orange tree. Orange blossom has a heady, sweet, but also creamy fragrance to it. And it also has a bit of a refreshing feel because it has a citrus facet to it. A mad craze for orange blossom was created by Queen Victoria when she married Prince Albert in 1840, wearing a wreath of orange blossom. At the time, it was thought that orange blossom symbolised purity, innocence and eternal love. But it wasn't just Europeans that saw orange blossom this way. In China, Persia and India, orange blossom was also regarded as a symbol of purity and innocence but also as a symbol of fertility, since orange blossom appears at the same time on the tree as the orange fruits. So if you want an orange blossom fragrance to convey feelings of eternal love, innocence and purity, which one should you go for? Well, I would choose Elisab Le Parfum, because this one is just very rich white floral fragrance with orange blossom and jasmine. My second choice would be Classique, and this is the Eau de Toilette version from Jean-Paul Gaultier. So this fragrance to me smells a bit like Nag Champa incense at points, but it also has a very lovely powdery orange blossom note to it. Um, it's really quite beautiful. So that's my second choice, uh, Classique EDT by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So the next note is lavender. So lavender symbolizes loyalty, devotion, serenity, and grace. And lavender is a silvery green shrub that grows in very dry Mediterranean soils and has beautiful spiky purple flowers on it and it actually belongs to the mint family. And because it's quite a herbal flower, it has really strong associations with healing and cleansing. So the name lavender actually comes from lavare in Latin, which means to wash. The scent of lavender is extremely relaxing. It's really widely used in aromatherapy. So if you want to give off serene and graceful vibes, which fragrances should you go for? Well, I would probably choose uh, Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker because this one has a very delicate powdery lavender in it 
very long lasting and it has a nice woody dry down. So that's my first choice, Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. And my second choice would be YSL Libre, which is quite a rich and vanillic lavender. Another choice could be Mongolin Bagelin. So the next floral is the Sweet Pea. And sweet peas were actually only brought to Britain in the 18th century by a Sicilian monk because sweet peas are native to southern Italy. Sweet peas have beautiful butterfly shaped flowers and they were traditionally thought to bloom on the longest day of the year, on the 21st of June. In 18th century Italy, sweet peas were traditionally given to people who were going on long journeys. It was believed that sweet peas had magical powers and that they would ensure that the passenger would have a happy journey. In France, even nowadays, sweet peas are given to brides to wish them good luck. And so sweet peas are thought to symbolise farewells, friendship, gratitude, good wishes and blissful pleasure. So if you're wishing farewell to someone and want to wear a, a sweet pea fragrance to do so, then you should probably check out something like My Burberry by Burberry, which is a peach and sweet pea fragrance that has an almost rain evoking feeling to it. There's also Jimmy Choo Blossom, which is a powdery raspberry rose fragrance in the main, but does have a sweet pea note lurking in the background. The next floral note is Violets, and Violets are actually named after Violi, which is actually the colour that the Violets are, so it's that purpley colour. And in many cultures, the Violet is a sacred plant. So in the Celtic culture, Violets were associated with love and marriage, and they were often used in marriage ceremonies. In the Christian culture, violets are associated with the time when Mary was told she was pregnant and they are also associated with the time when Jesus was crucified. Violets are also mentioned in a few Greek myths and one of these myths is actually the myth of Io. So Io was a mortal being, she was a princess on earth and actually she was pretty unlucky because Zeus fell in love with her and actually Zeus's wife wasn't that happy and told Zeus to do something about it. And so Zeus in the end decided that the best course of action to deal with his love for Io was to turn her into a dairy cow. So what has this got to do with Violet, she might ask? Well, Zeus was feeling a little bit guilty about turning his girlfriend into a, um, into a dairy cow. So what did he do? He gave her a pasture of violets. And the violets were said to keep Io healthy and, and radiant and fragrant but obviously as a dairy cow, not as a princess. So violets are known to symbolise sophistication, trust, modesty, loyalty and grace and they have a very particular powdery but sweet scent to them. And actually overall violets are most associated with everlasting love. And this is thought to be because violets give off a very heady, very sensual odour but one that smells very, very innocent. And that's why they are supposedly associated with everlasting love. So if you are innocent, trustworthy, faithful and in everlasting love, which fragrance should you reach for? Well, my choice for uh, Violet is a pretty obvious one. I think, you know, nobody could doubt that Insolence is the Violet perfume. It's, yeah, it's really sweet, really powdery, but kind of almost fruity violets this one it's a, a really strong one you don't need very much you can see I haven't used very much despite wearing it quite a lot because really one or two sprays and you're good for the entire day this is a really long lasting fragrance so that might be one to check out for your wedding I also have um, Balenciaga Paris which is more of a colder violet fragrance it's more metallic it's more aloof it's it's a very elegant fragrance this one to me so I think you know that would be suitable for a wedding I think it's something that has a bit of a greenness, a bit of a freshness to it, but it also does have that powdery, very elegant vibe that violets give fragrance. So the next floral note is lilacs. So lilac is a flower that is a purple kind of almost like a, like a candy floss looking flower. It looks like it's something on a stick and it blooms around May time in the UK and it has a really heady, sweet aroma. It's another purple floral. So the Latin name for lilac is syringa, and syringa actually comes from the Greek syrinc, and syrinc in Greek means pipe. So there's a Greek myth by which the god Pan fell in love with the nymph syringa, and syringa rejected his advances, and so to hide, she turned herself into a lilac bush 
which is where we get the name for lilac from, Syringa. So actually she hid so well that Pan saw the shrub and decided to cut some reeds off it to make some pipes for a musical instrument. So you can see where the Muzak cool waiting kind of pan pipes come from. It's actually from the myth of Pan and Syringa lilac. So traditionally lilac symbolises the first signs of love because of its intoxicating sweet fragrance. And if you want to smell of lilac and like somebody's first love, then you could try Drop to Issy, which is a beautiful lilac fragrance with a kind of almost suntan cream or body cream feeling about it and a really beautiful kind of licorice anise opening that's really quite striking. I really like Issy Maki's Drop to Issy. Or you could try Lilac Path by Erin or perhaps Gucci Guilty. So the next floral note is one that's really quite different from other floral notes and it's iris. So iris can really give fragrances a bit of a powdery feeling, almost like makeup. And iris is something that gets its name from the Greek for rainbow. The Greek goddess Iris was said to be the bridge between heaven and earth and she was the messenger who communicated between the gods and humans. Irises themselves have very large colour variations and that may be where the name stuck from because they are a little bit like a rainbow with those yellows and purples and blues. Since irises bloom in very early spring generally they are said to be hopeful flowers and their three upright petals are said to represent faith, valour and wisdom. The iris is also said to symbolise noble intentions and virtue. So if you want to smell wise and hopeful like iris, which fragrances should you choose? Well, I really like Floral Street Iris Goddess. I think that's a really nice fragrance. That's a bit of a darker iris with more of a lipsticky feel to it. And I've also recently finished a little mini of Infusion de Iris by Prada. I think that fragrance is more of a green, soapy, clean iris. They, those two fragrances are very different irises, but yeah, just check them out and see which one that you prefer. So those are my choices for iris. So the next floral note is said to be the floral note that makes perfumes perfumes. It's been said that a perfume isn't a perfume if it doesn't have jasmine in it. And jasmine is something that is native to the Himalayas and has then spread across the world. And actually the word jasmine comes from the Persian word yasmin. And yasmin, depending upon who you ask, either means fragrant flower or gift from God. So jasmine is a flower of happiness. It's used as a wedding flower in Indonesia and India, where it also symbolises love. And this is because of its powerful intoxicating fragrance, just like love. In the Greek and Roman traditions, jasmine is intimately associated with Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. Because jasmine is white, it's associated with purity and it's often used in temples as a fragrance. Jasmine is also associated with feminine powers and it's a very sensuous smell, jasmine. In Victorian times, jasmine was really not a fragrance for a lady. Jasmine was something that was associated with prostitutes and brothels. So, you, you know, if you'd offered a Victorian lady a, a posy with jasmine in it, she, she probably wouldn't thank you. So if you want to evoke feelings of love and happiness that are associated with jasmine, which perfume should you try? Well, jasmine can smell very different in different perfumes. It can be creamy, it can be indolic, it can be almost green and clean, actually, jasmine. It's something that is really quite diverse and it's something that can be kind of heady and a little bit too much sometimes for me. But the fragrance that I would choose from my own collection would of course be the classic clean jasmine, Alien. So I have the new version, I have the old version and yeah, Alien is, is a good one for jasmine. It's really one of the purest jasmine fragrances you're going to find. And another more recent choice for a jasmine fragrance would be something like Good Fortune by Victor and Rolf. So this fragrance is more of a almost bitter jasmine to begin with but then it becomes very creamy and vanillic in the dry down. So that's another one to check out, Good Fortune by Victor and Rolf. So now we're on to the naughtiest floral note of all. Um, I always used to think this was jasmine, but no, it's tuberose. So tuberose is something, again, that no Victorian lady would probably want to be offered. It's something that is really representative of lust and lustful feelings. Tuberose traditionally symbolises 
wild pleasures and primordial passion. According to the Victorians, tuberose is the fragrance for lust, seduction and obsession. And actually young girls were actively discouraged from smelling tuberose because it was feared it would awaken their passions and desires. So tuberose is actually known as the fragrance of the night because of its intoxicating nighttime aroma. And tuberose just overall is the ultimate symbol of lustful indulgence. So if you want to give off a vibe of obsessive love and seduction, which fragrance should you wear? Well, I think the one that I've tried recently that really struck me as a tuberose heavy fragrance would be Narciso Rodriguez for her Musk Noir Rose. I actually felt like this was more tuberose than rose for me. I know that some people disagree with that, but that's that one for me was a lot of tuberose. So that's a good one to try. Um, and I would pick for my own collection Madonna's Truth or Dare, which is a really strong white floral fragrance that to me smells a little bit almost like sherbet sometimes, but it also has a lot, a lot of lily in this one. So it's not just tuberose, but it does have tuberose. And then another tuberose fragrance is, is Gucci Bloom, and but I have the flank, I have Gucci Bloom Natari de Fiore. So you can check out the Gucci Bloom range because it's basically based around honeysuckle in the main, but a lot of them do have tuberose in as well. So next we are going on to the most famous association in floriography, the one that everybody knows the meaning of, and that is rose. So roses symbolise true love and passion. So if your favourite fragrance has a rose note in it, you are deemed to be a dreamer, a romantic person, someone who is searching for love. In Victorian times, it was believed that the deeper the passion you held for someone, the darker and deeper red the flower that you give them should be. Different colours of roses had different meanings. So if you gave somebody a yellow rose, for example, it meant more about friendship. Or if you gave someone a white rose, it meant to, something to do with innocence and purity, as is the case with many white florals. And pink roses indicate gratitude. But beautifully, purple roses suggest enchantment. So they might be a great choice for a wedding bouquet. Much like the different colours of roses in floriography and their meanings, roses and perfumery are also very diverse and different roses in different fragrances smell very differently. So you can get fragrances with Thyth rose in, for example, that smell almost sweet and sugary. And one of those would be um, Nina Ricci Lextas Rose Absolu, which is a Middle Eastern style, almost oudy fragrance. So that might be a nice one for a wedding, perhaps a winter wedding. And then there's also the greener roses. And I have a few greener roses in my collection. I think something for an alternative wedding that would really work would be something like Flora Botanica. I think, you know, if you were getting married outside, this might be a nice one to choose. So this has green notes of mint and cannabis, as well as that rose. Or you could go for something just really long lasting and clean smelling like a uh, coach EDP. And the next note is actually carnations. So carnations are special in that they actually are something in Victorian times that were used by gay men to represent their identity. So they were they were put in buttonholes by people like Oscar Wilde, who wore green carnations as a kind of like membership almost of a, of a secretive club because if you were homosexual in Victorian times and you got caught it really wasn't looking good for you and it didn't look good for Oscar Wilde at points. So green carnations do have a very particular meaning and a very particular association that is very important to particular communities. Carnations are native to the Mediterranean and their Latin name is Dianthus. Dianthus in Latin means flower of the gods. Again much like roses the meaning of carnation varies with their colour. So of course, dark red means romantic love. Lighter red means admiration. Pink means motherly love. And actually, a striped carnation indicates rejection. You can smell carnation in a few fragrances. It's less popular these days than it was in the 80s. But back in the 80s, and still now, you can still get Carvin Klein's Eternity which does have a very strong carnation note to it. So carnations can quite often smell a bit like cloves. In fact, carnations are actually named clove pinks as an alternative name. So that really gives you an idea of how they do smell. 
So that's the final floral note in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed reading about floriography and researching for this video. If you did like this video, then please like this video and also please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please let me know which of these floral notes is your favourite. And if you have already got married or you're thinking about getting married and you have a fragrance choice in mind, please let me know what that fragrance choice is. I would be absolutely fascinated to know what people wore for their weddings. And also thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.